This page was created to teach black history. Unfortunately, the American educational system was designed to exclude our real historical account, so we are here to dismantle it. It's time to enlighten those of us who have been kept in the dark. I too was a black man who didn't know enough about our own history, so I began to dig deeper and do my own research. I want people of all races and cultures to join together to learn our history as one. Here, I will share all of my findings. Please share and support Teaching Black History. The Story of Robert Smalls Robert Smalls was born in 1839 to Lydia Polite, a woman enslaved by Henry McKay who was most likely Small's father. She gave birth to him in a cabin behind McKay's house in Buford, South Carolina. His mother lived as a servant in the house, but grew up in the fields. Robert was favored over other slaves, so his mother worried that he might grow up not understanding the plight of field slaves and asked for him to be made to work in the fields. When he was 12, at the request of his mother, Small's master sent him to Charleston to hire out a laborer for one dollar a week, with the rest of the wage being paid to his master. In his teen years, his love of the sea led him to find work on Charleston's docks. Smalls worked as a longshoresman, a rigger, a sailmaker, and eventually worked in his way up to become a wheelman, more or less a pilot those slaves were not permitted that title. At age 17, Smalls married Hannah Jones, an enslaved hotel maid in Charleston on December 24, 1856. She was five years his senior and already had two daughters. Their own first child, Elizabeth Smalls, was born in February 1858. Three years later, they had a son, Robert Jr., who later died at age two. Robert aimed to pay for their freedom by purchasing them outright, but the price was steep, $800. He had managed to save up only $100. It could take decades for him to reach 800. In April, 1861, the American Civil War began with the Battle of Fort Smutter in nearby Charleston Harbor. In the fall of 1861, Smalls was assigned to steer the CSS Planter, a lightly armed Confederate military transport. The planter's duties were to deliver dispatches, troops, and supplies to survey waterways and to lay mines. Smalls gains the confidence of the planter's crew and owners in April 1862. Smalls began to plan an escape. He discussed the matter with the other slaves in the crew, except one whom he did not trust. On the evening of May 12th, the planter was docked, as usual, at the wharf below General Ripley's headquarters. His three white officers disembarked to spend the night ashore, leaving Smalls and the crew on board. At about 3 a.m. May 13th, Smalls and seven of the eight slave crew members made their previous plan escape to the Union blockade ships. Smalls put on the captain's uniform and wore straw hats similar to the captain's. He sailed the planter past what was then called Southern Wharf and stopped at another wharf to pick up his wife and children and the families of other crewmen. Smalls guided the ship past the five Confederate harbor forts without incident as he gave the correct signals at checkpoints. The alarm was only raised after the ship was beyond gun range. Smalls headed straight for the Union Navy fleet, replacing the rebel flags with a white bed sheet, which was brought by his wife. The planter had been seen by the USS Onward, which was about to fire. He surrendered the planter and his cargo to the United States Navy. Small's escape plan had succeeded. Small's own extensive knowledge of the Charleston region's waterfront 
and military configurations proved highly valuable. The planter was forwarded to Flag Officer DuPont at Port Royal, describing Smalls as very intelligent. DuPont was impressed and wrote the following to the Navy Secretary in Washington. Robert, the intelligent slave and pilot of the boat who performed this bold feat so skillfully, informed me of the capture of the smarter gun. Performing it would be a matter of interest. He is superior to any who have come into our lines, intelligent as many of them have been. Smalls also worked as a civilian with the Navy until March 1863 when he was transferred to the Army. By his own account, Smalls was present at 17 major battles and engagements in the Civil War. At the outset of the Civil War, Smalls could not read or write, but he achieved literacy in Philadelphia. In 1864, Smalls was in a streetcar in Philadelphia and was ordered to give his seat to a white passenger. Rather than ride on the open overflow platform, Smalls left the car. This incident of humiliating heroic veteran was cited in the debate that resulted in the legislature's passing a bill to integrate public transportation in Pennsylvania in 1867. The Navy did not allow him to hold the rank of pilot because he was not a graduate of a Navy Academy, a requirement at the time. To assure he received proper pay for a captain, he was commissioned second lieutenant. When Small sought a Navy pension, he learned that he had not been officially commissioned. He claimed he had received an official commission from Gilmore, but had lost it. In 1883, a bill passed committee to put him on the Navy retired list, but in the end was halted, allegedly due to Smalls being black. In 1897, a special act of Congress granted Smalls a pension of $30 per month, equal to the pension for a Navy captain. Following the war, Smalls returned to his native Buford, where he purchased his former master's house, which Union tax authorities had seized in 1863 for refusal to pay taxes. In 1866, Smalls went into business in Buford with Richard Gleaves, a businessman from Philadelphia. They opened a store to serve the needs of freed men. Smalls invested significantly in the economic development of the Charleston Buford region. In 1870, with fellow representatives, formed the Enterprise Railroad, an 18 mile horse drawn railroad line that carried cargo and passengers between the Charleston Wars and inland depots. In words that became famous, he described his party as the Party of Lincoln which unshackled the necks of four million human beings. He wrote this line on September 12, 1912. In 1868, Smalls was elected to the South Carolina House of Representatives. He was very effective and introduced the Homestead Act and introduced and worked to pass the Civil Rights Bill. In 1875, he opposed the transfer of troops out of the South, fearing the effect of such a move on the safety of blacks in the South. During consideration of a bill to reduce and restructure the United States Army, Smalls introduced an amendment that read, Hereafter in the enlistment of men in the Army, no distinction whatsoever shall be made on an account of race or color. However, the amendment was not considered by Congress. Smalls was active in the 20th century in 1913. In one of his final actions as community leader, he played an important role in stopping a lynch mob from killing two black suspects in the murder of a white man. He pressured the mayor saying that blacks he had sent throughout the city 
would burn the town down if the mob was not stopped. The mayor and the sheriff stopped the mob. His first wife, Hannah Smalls, died on July 28, 1883. On April 9, 1890, Robert Smalls married Annie Wig, a Charleston school teacher who bore him one son. Smalls died of malaria and diabetes in 1915 at the age of 75. He was buried in his family's plot in the churchyard of the Tabernacle Baptist Church in downtown Buford. The monument to Smalls in this churchyard is inscribed with a statement he made to the South Carolina legislator in 1895. My race needs no special defense for the past history of them in this country proves them to be the equal of any people anywhere. All they need is an equal chance in the battle of life.